Minutes from August 9th. Move to accept. I'll second. Correct. All in favor of accepting the minutes as read as written from August August 9th, 2023. Say aye. Aye. Those opposed, unanimous. CPC plan updates. Catherine said in a note to me that they were supposed to work on updating their part of the plan, the housing part of the plan at their October meeting, but it wasn't posted right. So now they have to do it on their November meeting. So their meeting, which is really good to begin with, and they know that they need to update their plan. I think maybe the Recreation Commission needs to update the plan too. Um, back when the plan was developed, the Recreation Commission or Recreation Committee wrote down a few things that they thought was a priority for the Recreation Committee. And one of them was like fixing up the field at the fire station. Um, a couple of other things make creating a new ball field. Well, some of them have been done and some of them are not Hurley, going to Hurley he was one and that's been done. Right. So I think the Recreation Commission needs to look at the CPC plan. And it's very simple, Chris. You look it over, you look at the priorities for you guys. And if some of them have already been done, cross them off. And if you have some others that you'd like to add, Put them on. Um, do you I have, have a suggestion for adding one? Um, I remember when we put the plan together last year, I was flabbergasted to discover that Fish and Game owned 9.6% of Wheatley's land. And one of the Andrew oh. likes that, Judy. Just well, it just depends on accessibility. Though it's nice that land is protected, but the access. Yeah. Well, you know. no, I think it's great. I know you there. do. I I know you do. <laughs> but what bothers me is that there's a goal on the on the Recreation Commission part of the plan to how does it go? Something about uh, building a trail network or something. And, and in fact, in a lot of this land, there is trails, but there's no parking. It, it's very inaccessible for people. And I, I was wondering if the Rec Commission could have some sort of objective to get better access or to work with Fish and Game or something. CPA funds would pay for that. When you can talk to um, Kestrel, they do a lot of like trail maintenance and grants with that too. The Kestrel yeah. Trust, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's there, it's preserved. Uh, Snowmobile Club maintains some trails. Um, they're all logging trails. But I know of precisely one parking space on North Street. It used to be three, but it's down to one now. And there's no access. There's no place to... goes right up to 5 and 10, but there's no place <clears> to park <throat> there. Um, and there must be lots of other places where there could be... You know, it would be a great recreation source, but it's essentially unusable. Right. This is something we were actually um, talking about in our last meeting. Um, I mean, it takes time to do it a bit. About like, um, like a bike path type thing going from Hurley and, you know, where people could walk, you could ride bikes, you could walk your dog, like all that different kind of stuff. And then you would be able to use Hur Hurlihy for parking, which would kind of be a cool thing. Wayne was thinking that there was some spot where maybe you could you could go up to like Long Plain Road and spit out by the elementary school or something. But so that is something that we've um we're definitely like thinking about anyway. <laughs> That'd be a huge process. Um but we are we are thinking about it. Well, I, I think just, you know, talking to Fish and Game and seeing if they'd be amenable to establishing some parking spots, just. There would be a great parking spot right. right off of Swamp Road where the snowmobile trail comes out and that trail goes all the way to the campgrounds. Oh, it's, yeah, a great, it. it's a great walking trail and it's all Fish and Game. Mm -hmm. You yeah, need a place swamp. to park on Swamp Road to access it. So I, I think... I should remember this, but I think 
there is something like a beginning of a plan in the open space and recreation plan that was approved uh, maybe year before last. But one of the challenges is that the open space committee is either disbanded or defunct. Um, and so nobody's particularly following up on the many, many, many recommendations. And, and that's actually by the, <laughs> that's a problem, but that's not really the point. My, my real point, Chris, is that you might want to look at that because yep. it might be, you know, it, it's, it's a very dense report. At the end, there are a lot of sort of bullet pointed recommendations. Okay. And, if and you it's, could, that's like on, on site, like I can look up stuff on the open space committee and find that info. I think you can go to a tab for the open space committee and find it because I complained once that it had vanished. But if you can't, I have a let me know and I have a copy of it and I'll send it to you. Okay. okay. Good to know. Historical commission, they updated to the plan last year. So I imagine that's pretty current. I think it's pretty current. We'll talk about it at our November meeting. Yep. But I, yeah. I personally, I can't imagine what would change from right. 10 months ago, nine months ago. I, I don't either. Yeah. Andrew, I don't think there's much difference in the co conservation in the open space data, is there? Uh, it might be a little bit with maybe like the parcel at Dickinson Hill, but it might be minor, I think, you know, I don't think there's much change to the open space on our end. Yeah, I don't, that, that data was just updated last year, so it should be. Yeah, accurate. should be pretty, yeah, should be pretty accurate, yeah. Yeah, I th like I said, I don't think any of the um, priorities have changed for us either with the open space part of it. <laughs> so. Any other discussion about the plan updates? Okay. You want to look at some of the sample funding applications? Um, Judy was kind enough to add three for us, for us to look at. Um, I agree with her. Those three are very good applications. Well, they were the ones the group picked, I think, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Simple okay. ones, yeah. You want to look? You want to look? Everybody got them in front of them, or where did they? Do you I, <laughs> I mean, I to me the best way of doing it is looking at them and saying what's good about each one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Judy, you were thinking about writing something up. Well, I did write one sheet that I circulated. Yeah. Um. And I was, I tried to capture the kinds of things that would be generic to each type of application, like historical needed to show why it was worth preserving and then how, how the proposed project would, would meet the secretary's standards, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, APR needed to show where it is, where the valuation came from, what why the land is worth preserving how much the how much the town portion is of the total that kind of thing um and recreation i think it's description of the project the place where it's going to be um how the budget is derived and and where it's going to be so yeah. mm -hmm. No, I think the, so that's that's I thought if we had just like an umbrella statement saying these are the things that it shows and, and here's the sample, but um, Doug has I, suggested proposing take having annotations on the on the application itself, and that's also doable. Um I thought your your notes the, the document that's headed links to sample is really good. Um, it made me think of a, a couple of other things <laughs> that that really good applications do. Um, and maybe maybe the first thing I'm gonna say is too heavy handed to be helpful, but I think a good application um, 
it's clear when you read a good application that the applicant has read the guidelines and has attempted to answer every question in the, you know, in the application form, um, which I guess is implied in your list of the different components. Um, and the other thing uh, that we might want to say explicitly, which you imply, is that a good application, if there are other sources of funding, a good application gives the total budget for the project and and says clearly what you know what portion CPA funds would support. Um, yeah. Those were the only two things. I mean, I, I thought of this without actually looking at the good applications, but thinking a little bit about the kinds of questions we've had to go back to people with. I, I was thinking about where this would appear if we did decide to use it. And I think it would be on the application page itself. And that does have the guidelines. And so then the lead in to this could be after you've read the guidelines. Read this. Here, here yeah. are some, here are some right. samples. There's a link to some samples mm -hmm. that, to help you. I like or that. In addition to the guidelines. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and then it's easy enough to add all the sources of funding to each to each one. That's that's mm -hmm. easily done. Mm -hmm. Oh, that makes sense. <clears throat> Doug, are we getting closer to what you had envisioned? When yeah, I, I think so. Um, I, I for some reason I was not able to open those attachments of the applications. I, <clears throat> I also didn't give myself very much time to try to figure it out because it was a quarter to five when I did it. But um, <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to look at mail until then. So. Um, <laughs> So I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think so. Uh, you know, the thing is, time time is going to tell if people who put in applications, you know, say, oh, this is really helpful to have that sample in there. Or, you know, it might just be something that kind of evolves over time and hopefully gets more helpful. Yeah, that's the nice thing about web stuff. It's easily updated. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I, it makes me think that the... The only, I, again, I'm not quite sure how to word this, but I think a lot of applicants um, get caught up in questions uh, like, well, has the Conservation Commission looked at this or has some other committee look at, looked at this? And I, I don't quite know how to address that in the guidelines. Well, it does ask that very clearly. That, it says if you or, don't do it within 90 days, we won't consider it. It doesn't right it. now. Now we do it. Now we say that. But I have the impression that some applicants that it doesn't actually occur to some applicants that that would be important until the application's already in and um, the process is underway. And uh, you know, 90 days is a pretty long time. It's not you know 20 days. <laughs> so maybe that's adequate. Well, you figure yeah, you got to meet. If we got to have a meetings during those times, you know, you figure you got to include the meeting, site visits, or whatever, you know, see the site. Yeah, so ninety days seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, I think ninety days is fine. I think that's on the application page now too. In fact, I know it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. On the application, it says town board slash committees, which reviewed the project. So they're asked, the application actually asks that it's already been done. It's already been yeah, reviewed. Um, actually, I thought Neil's answer to the way he filled it out for the cemetery funding was good because he, he said, these are the, we have scheduled Right, it says by... review requested slash pending. Yeah. So as long as they know that they need to do it. Yeah. It just seems some some of the applications leaves that blank. <clears throat> so 
it would be nice <laughs> if we could fix this, but I don't think we will. All right. I'm going back to recreation. If they bring in an uh, application, they need to have it reviewed by open space, true? No, just recreation. Yeah, because op there is no open space committee. Re recreation doesn't fall fall under. Recreation is open space. Yeah. Okay. When it's not not, you know, no, I guess. When it's, when it's not APR, because right? APR has to go to. They they changed the law, so recreation is this is separate now. Although it still doesn't have its own bucket. Okay. All right. Okay, we'll put that link to the sample CPA funding in with the application on the website. Sound good to everybody? Yep. Right. Yep. Moving right along. I got a few things that I just want to mention to everybody. Some of you guys probably already know this, some of you don't. Uh, the grant agreement between Quanquant and the town of Waitley has been executed and registered at the Registry of Deeds. So that's a done deal. We should expect to see some requests for funding soon now. Um, church windows. Um, you, want to, you want me to read your email? It sounds well, I... like he's been on, he had a hard time. Right. Yeah. Um, the church got the first four windows in April, and then hasn't heard from hadn't heard from the restorer till middle of September. We had initiated some actions to try and try and get contact. He he never was good at responding to emails or phone calls ever. <laughs> It's just not in him, I think. Um, and then he sent an email on September 18th that basically said he'd been very ill. Um, he was better. He had not had a backup and he has remedied that. He has two of the windows about ready to be installed and would plan to be working on the others. That was three weeks ago. We haven't heard from him again. We haven't. Oh. So um oh. <laughs> so one of the church members is gonna go up this week and see if there's any act activity in the in his workshop. And I suspect if he was ill, ours is not the only project he's behind on. True. And so we were, we, were, we were relieved and now we're starting to get worried again. But so does he have all your windows? Yes. This is sounding ominously like the painter. Some of you will remember our unpainted house for 18 months. <laughs> no. He has the windows. Um, he has more money than the work he's done so far. Um, the church will make that up if, if for some reason there's a shortfall, but the town, the CPA will not suffer that part. But we're starting to get worried about cold weather, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Mm. Not to mention the fact that it looks awful. You know, Gosh. Just, so. when, I, when I read his email, I was very excited. It seemed like he was yeah. very apologetic and it says again i cannot apologize enough for what i have caused you i feel terrible about the situation but then and he, he went he into heard from him for three of, weeks he went into a great deal of detail you know hmm. we have these windows ready uh by the way we still have hardware to install on the others and um you know it was more detail than i thought he needed to do if he was just covering up but right. um, so I don't know. Okay. Don't... Stay posted, I guess. Ash, but but at least I mean I understand why you're worried about heat, but at least the original windows are not 
sitting in the frames that are falling apart, vulnerable to another winter. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um yes. All right. Stay tuned. Yeah. Um, I can make a, a a brief incomplete report on the final stages of the cemetery grant, if if you'd like. The cemetery um, grant? Well, so you know <laughs> if you drive around that the fences were repaired or replaced some time mm -hmm. ago, but there was also part of the grant that actually fell under open space and recreation had a hand in that in approving it um, to add granite benches. Um, so Swenson made the benches, they were delivered uh, in the summer, I'm going to say. Um, Neil found a volunteer neighbor with a front loader and they are installed in the center cemetery. Um, and uh, Keith has said that the highway guy, the, the, the pieces, <laughs> the heavy granite pieces are sitting in the other two cemeteries. And when Keith and his guys find a day or two, it probably actually won't take even a day. They'll put them. I mean, they're just you need a machine to lift them up and put the seat on the legs. Um, but that so that should be, I'm sure it'll be finished this fall. It could be finished in the next week. Great. Right. And the library steps are done. Except for that uh what did what did um some kind of sealer? I'll say they're gonna put a sealer on it. And I, I dropped some books off. Uh, yesterday, actually, it didn't look to me like the seal had been put on. It yet, didn't, but, it didn't but, for the fall but he he either. said it would. It had to get. I think he said the temperature had to drop to a certain level. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can did, report on Jessica. Yeah, it's coming up. Oh, okay. We've got one more thing to do. Oh. The milk bottle. Dan Dennehy sent an email to me, I don't know who else got it, talking about the milk bottle that's down at the center school. As we know, the town is trying very hard to find somebody to use that, lease it, but they can't find anybody to lease it. They may end up having to sell that property. Either way, if it's leased or sold outright, it's not a really good place for the milk bottle. And that's the point that Dan Danny he made in an email to some of us. Um, he made some suggestions over by the Yellow Barn or maybe in front of the, the cemetery where there's a little patch of grass or maybe the library, which to me makes probably most, most sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dan, a... Dan wrote to many, many people, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Um, we, the his his. The milk bottle is owned by the Historical Society. As you may know, it is not town property. Um, the town granted um, space to the Historical Society for the milk bottle in 1995. Um, as part of the work of the Historical Commission drafting, uh, the town has decided to try to sell um, the, um, uh, the center school. That decision was made last spring. Mm -hmm. uh, but part of the condition would be an historic preservation agreement that the new owners would sign, uh, which is 70 pages long, but the short form is do it, keep the exterior of the building as, as close to the way it, you know, to original as possible. Um, and as part of that, we've, we, the historical commission have worked with um, the Massachusetts Historical Commission and the Select Board and Brian to um, come up with a, a plan that would protect the milk bottle regardless of who owns the center school. Um, and that's, as I said, that is, you know, six, eight months of work that's, that's underway. Um, the question right now is literally where the boundary between the town right of way and the property that would be sold sits. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it had been any, it's it's in some ways, I just sent a note to folks today saying this, it's a shame that you know quite a few people have been talking about this for months and it just hadn't occurred to us to ask that question. Um, uh, 
so that's but the bill the, the property has to be surveyed anyway you can't sell a piece of property without being able to tell a prospective owner what would what are you buying <laughs> you know so um so that's where that is. I mean, I, I now will speak for myself and not the historical society, but it is uh, 90 years old. The historical society just spent $1,200 repairing it, moving it. You know, this is not like picking up a, you know, a cardboard box. The National Guard moved it in 1995 using military equipment. Um, so I'm I'm, it is, it, it is not a casual. And, and it's, it's it would be a bit. Sorry, I, I didn't hear that. If I were discussing this in the CPA meeting, I assume somebody thought that CPA funds might help move it. Uh, Dan and suggested not, that, and of course it's, it's not eligible. And, and, and last, uh, let's see, Tuesday night was last, Last night was Tuesday night. I sat through a very brief discussion um, in the select board, and and uh, one of the select board members said, "Well, you know, of course the survey will cost money, but moving the milk bottle would cost money too." Um, so I um, so that's that's the background. <laughs> um, I mean, I suppose it's also, clear. Go ahead. Also, I think there's quite a school of thought that that the milk bottle um, adds to the value of the property for a commercial venture, might not for a residential one, but but it's so iconic that if you say you're located at the site of the milk bottle or something. Um, but anyway, the, the select board has agreed to grant an easement for access to the historical society. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on. Jess came up with a project history for us. I'm sure Judy had quite a bit to help uh, help her do it, but it seems like it's done right. Uh, I don't know if she just followed what has been done in the past. Uh, you've been working with it at some point, Jude? Yeah. I Well, first she did the CP2 form. Right. To for the state, um, she's she's very hardworking. She's not a natural numbers person, I don't think, but um, she's very anxious to learn. That was a bit of a battle because I'm. It's hard when you've been doing something so long. You things seem very evident to you that aren't at all, and we kept get, getting hung up on interpretations of little things like other I don't know other government funds or other town funds and she was assuming it had to be Waitley funds and it, the project at hand was the the tennis courts where the other funds came from other town CPA money and, and you know where does this go and stuff like that so we but um yeah she she did do this I it took a couple go rounds because I wasn't explaining things especially well, but I think she did a good job. And if anybody has questions or, or concerns. The ice rink, we don't know if that's completed or not. There's a question mark. There's a thousand dollars left of us. Yeah. Can you find out for us, Chris? Yeah. <laughs> Back in 2022, they asked for $6,500 for to expand the ice rink and make some improvements. They spent about $5,500 or 5,500. So I think they're probably done, but we just need to know so we can encumber that money back. What's the next thing for Jess to do? <laughs> I think it's when we start as we go to looking at applications, she's going to have to project project available funds. Okay, that's going to be when I when I first started talking to her about the CP two. Brian asked, "Did she run from the room screaming?" And I said, "No." I said, "But but 
that was just filling in the project information. We didn't have to get into balance reserve or reserves and this kind yeah. of reserve and what why things have to be projected and all of that sort of stuff. So, and, and hasn't Catherine Catherine used to play a role in that uh, when? Um, yeah, well, <laughs> when was it Mary Ellen? I'm sorry, I just was providing oh, support like for this before Mary Ellen. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, and you remember in the beginning, we just didn't have any idea how much money we had. Mm. And Catherine spent a lot of time going back and looking at the receipts and then all of the projects and trying to figure out what had been spent and what hadn't. And, and you know, there was a lot of stuff that was missing, like interest on, on bank accounts and uh, funds that got rolled over from one place to another and everything. Now, Dara is so good and community preservation has really added a lot of data on town, town by town. On you can go, you can go to the community preservation website and download all your. Just look; they've got all your revenue history, what you collected, what the state collected year by year. They have your buckets at the end of the fiscal year that are reported on the CP two. Um, so. Even without Dara, I think. Anyway, and Dara and Brian have worked out an accounting system where they know how much interest is, and and it gets credited. So there's a lot less for this committee to do. It, the only real problem now is projecting, because we have to make up numbers for next year. Mm -hmm. Judy, did you did you say that this detail is all on the state website? On. Mm -hmm. Communitypreservation.org. Thanks. Just for the minutes. Okay. That was a good update. The last thing that I have is Catherine, I think you all re received it. There's an affordable housing trust, um, like a round table coming up October 17th over in Sunderland, where they had just started i don't know how full it is if it's completely full now the sanderson place over on main street but it's an affordable housing complex and we're invited any of one of us all of us next next tuesday i guess it is yeah at 5 30 you get a tour and then there's a round table with light light supper so if you didn't get an application let me know i'll make sure you get it Catherine is going to be going, which is awesome. Like I said earlier in the meeting, it's very great that, uh, very great, that's a good word. It's very good that <clears throat> the housing committee is meeting again. So yep. maybe we'll be getting somewhere. So that's all I have. Anyone else got anything? Wow. Cool. Andrew. Yes. When's our next meeting, buddy? Ah, uh, let's see. Pull up the calendar here. The second Wednesday in November is the eighth. Eighth it is, five o'clock. Um, I I will be out of town that day and I may be able to um join the committee. I'm visiting my father. Depends on when he's napping. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually serious. <laughs> um, so it would be great to have backup for, uh, you know, hosting the uh, Zoom call and minutes in case we need it, which doesn't have to be the same person. <laughs> no. I, I'm happy to do minutes. You'll do it? Yeah, minutes. Not the hosting. The hosting is not hard. I mean, Chris, you must know this. Do you do it for the recreation committee or are you meeting? Yeah. Um, it, you you are Brian Domina while you're... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm recruiting you. Can you tell? I'm recruiting you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. I can do that. Let me make one yeah. there. I'll put it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really, I will try to be at the meeting, but I just in case, you know, I don't want to leave you high okay. and dry. Well, thank you, everybody.
Good to see everybody again. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Happy Hi, Halloween. Tennis. Excuse me? Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Oh, yeah, Halloween is. Yeah.